The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. For whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Hello there. Why, hello. I'm Dr. Kildare. Dr. Henderson's been called out of town. I'm going to be your doctor for this afternoon. In that case, Dr. Kildare, I'm going to be your nurse for this afternoon. Go ahead. I'm Miss Thompson. Welcome to First Floor Receiving Ward. Thank you. I don't suppose you'll find this as exciting as that diagnostic clinic up in the clouds with Dr. Gillespie. Oh, oh you're wrong, Miss Thompson. First floor receiving a world of screaming <laughs> sirens and screeching ambulances, vibrant, full of life and action. Well, our action for the day has been one broken arm and one appendectomy. Mm -hmm. Both patients doing fine, both resting comfortably, and both hate doctors. <laughs> Here are the charts. Uh-huh. I'll look in on that appendectomy in a while. Not even a broken thermometer, Doctor. And frankly, nurse, that's the kind of a day I like to have in receiving. Mm -hmm. I don't mind looking out this window and not seeing an ambulance. Hmm? Miss Thompson, there's a passenger car parked in the ambulance driveway. Oh, I'd better call the emergency office and tell them to clear that runway. I don't know why anybody do a thing like that. Who's the... Where's the doctor here? No, I'm Dr. Kildare. Doc, you better come quick. I got him out in my car. Hmm? Miss Thompson, notify the litter crew. Come on, Doc. Come on. I think he's dying or something. And come right out with my bag. Right away, Doctor. I'd have brought him in myself, Doc, but I didn't want to move him until you had a look at him. That was the right thing to do. I uh, guess I shouldn't have come up the ambulance ramp, but I wanted somebody to get to him fast, and I couldn't find the other receiving end. Mm -hmm, sure. We were just getting ready to eat lunch when he folded up. He was suffering something awful. Said his stomach was killing him, so oh. I filed him into my car and drove him right over. It was the nearest place. Thought it might be appendicitis or something. Good. Uh, this is him, Doc. This is Joe. All right. Let me have a look now. I'm all right. I'll be all right in a while. I want to get back to my job. I... Nurse? The litter crew is standing by, Doctor. Good. It's an internal hemorrhage. He's going into shock. I'll need morphine for this man. Yes, Doctor. I don't get it, Doc. What is it? What's the matter? Joe's never been sick a day all the time he's worked for me. Tell me, was he involved in an accident of some kind? Accident? No. Joe didn't even take his truck out today. Hasn't got any broken bones or anything. I felt for those Here's or I... Here's the sedative, Doctor. Oh, good. Thanks. There. All right, Miss Thompson, put him on the ward right away. Yes, Doctor. Until we know how serious this is and what it is, we'll 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 have to keep him here. Yeah, I guess you're right. Are you a relative of his? No. Uh, Joe works for me. Standard Products. He's one of my drivers. I'm the foreman there. My name's Schumann, Bernie Schumann. Ah, uh, well, Mr. Schumann, we'll have to admit him. Can you give us his family's address? And, uh... Oh, Joe's wife would be scared if a doctor was to call and tell her something happened to Joe. Uh, could I tell Lorraine? The patient complained of severe stomach pains before he collapsed. That is, according to the man who brought him in. Mm-hmm. And the patient himself. Evidently, he's been having recurring symptoms for several months. I see. Pain seems to be localized? Yes, in the epigastrium, right between the ensiform and the umbilicus. Mm-hmm. And what did the x-ray show, Dr. Kildare? Well, they just came back. Here, take a look. Uh-huh. Oh. It's a gastric lesion, all right. Diagnosis seems fairly obvious, Jimmy. The patient has a perforated ulcer. You've certainly established that. He's being prepped for surgery right now. Posterior gastroenterostomy. Uh, of course, yeah. I mean, you know, Dr. Gillespie, there's an unusual problem here. There's an age incidence involved. Huh? What do you mean, Jimmy? Mm -hmm. Joe Finley's just a kid. Only 24 years old. 24 years old? Oh. 
and he's already worried himself into this serious physical condition. Well, it happens, but not very often. It's bad enough for a 40-year-old man to come to me with a stomach that he's been systematically ruining for years. But this... They're ready for you up in surgery, Dr. Kilburn. Oh, thank you, Miss Thompson. Care to go with me, Dr. G? Oh, you bet your bottom dollar I'll go to surgery with you, Jimmy. And after that, I want to be in on this case. I want to know just what kind of life Mr. Joe Finley's been leading to put him in this hospital before he's dry behind the ears. you were here yet this morning. Well, you know what now, Parker? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, could you manage a phone call to Dr. Kildare? He's probably up in surgery. Well, he's probably not even here yet. It's early, and I don't think... I know you don't. Well, I like that. I thought you would. Good morning, Parker. Oh, Dr. Kildare. Oh, I don't have to ask if he's in. You certainly do not. He's in. We're just about to phone you. That's you, Jimmy? Good morning, Doctor. Come in, come in, come in, come in. And shut the door. I don't want any mule-eared nurse listening in on our conversation. I'll shut it myself. <laughs> yeah, that woman has an awful temper. Don't know how I put up with her. All oh, too years. bad. Well, Jimmy, how's our patient? How'd he get through the night? I'm fairly comfortable. No complications. Well, well, that's fine, fine. That's one hurdle out of the way. Mm, but this Finley boy... We're going to get over that second hurdle with him and cure him. We've got to find out what's worrying him and eliminate it. Or he's not going to be cured. I agree with you. What is it, Parker? Uh, Dr. Kildare, Mr. Schumann's here to see you. Oh, Dr. Kildare. Hello, Mr. Schumann. Oh, this is Dr. Gillespie. Doctor? How do you do, Mr. Schumann? Dr. Gillespie and I were just discussing Joe's case. We hope that you might... Doctor, I'd like to see Joe. I've got to talk to him. Something's come up, Mr. Schumann? Something the matter at his home? No. No. Oh, I guess you'd find out sooner or later. I I can't stop it. What are you talking about? Well, I took over Joe's route myself. I started driving it this morning. I had to take over his receipt books, too. Well, he's short. $1,645. No. Are you sure? Yeah, he's been tapping it all along the route for months. I stumbled onto it. Wish I hadn't. If he's still got the money, I want to ask him where it is and put it back. We're covered by a bonding company. They'd see he gets the limit for grand larceny if they know. Are you sure he took the money? That couldn't have been anybody else. Please, can I see him? And... I couldn't even allow the police in to see him right now. Well, all right, I'll drop back later. Yeah, you do that. Doc, Joe's an awful nice kid. I, well, I hope... Well, I'll see you. I'll see you. Uh, this is more background on our patient than I hoped for. Hmm. At least we know what's been worrying him. I wonder. Suppose we go talk to his wife. Doesn't seem to be anybody home, Jimmy. No. Well, I guess we aren't going to meet Lorraine Finley after all, I... Come in. Oh. Mrs. Finley? Yes. Over here in bed. Ah. Oh, I'm Dr. Gillespie. Uh, this is Dr. Kildare. Oh, yes. Mr. Schumann told me you were taking care of Joe. Joe is going to be all right. He will get better and strong. We have every reason to hope so, Mrs. Finley. The operation was a complete success, and there are no complications. As well, yet. Well, what is it? What's wrong? Well, one of the contributing factors to Joe's present condition is that he's been terribly worried and upset for a long period of time. Oh. And in order for his recovery to become complete, he must be free from that worry when he gets out of the hospital. It's me. He worries about me all the time. Oh, no, no, no. I've been sick for such a long time, and Joe's been doing everything for me. And I'm no help to him this way. 
I know I'm the one who's put him in the hospital. I, I know it. I know it. Mm. Uh, are you under a physician's care now? Yes. Who? Dr. Klaus Blackthorne, my doctor. I see. He, he's been giving me shots. Well, what's Dr. Blackthorne's diagnosis? It's my heart. Your heart? But he says I'll be well and up in no time, and, and, and I will. And then Joe won't have to worry about me. I promise you that. I'll, I'll see that he doesn't worry about me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, Mrs. Findlay, it's been nice meeting you. We have to run along now. Oh, thank you for coming by and telling me about Joe. Mm. I promise you he won't worry about me when he gets out of the hospital. All right. Goodbye, Mrs. Finley. Uh, goodbye. Oh, thank you again. Did you see it? Yes. Pallor, obvious temperature, and dilated pupils. I don't even need a stethoscope for that one. Either my 40 years of practice have taught me nothing, or Dr. Blackthorne is revolutionizing the medical profession. Heart trouble. Yeah. That girl's suffering from acute anemia. You're right. <laughs> Doctor, it looks as if we found another hurdle. Mm. This one is probably the biggest of them all. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Schumann speaking. Oh, uh, this is Dr. Kildare at Blair Hospital. Oh, yeah, Doc. How's Joe? Oh, Joe's doing fine, just fine. That's why we called you. Uh, here, Dr. Gillespie wants to talk to you. Suppose Joe Finley could somehow get enough money to replace what he uh, what he lacks in his accounts. Hmm? You mean you talk to him and he's got it? We... Oh, I knew Joe would. Wait a minute now. Could the money be replaced without anyone ever finding it out? Oh, don't you worry, Doc. Nah. If Joe's got that dough, I know just what to do. Uh -huh. Just what to do. Good, Schumann, good, good. I'm sending a messenger over with $1,645. Parker? Parker! I'm sorry, Dr. Clusby, I heard you, but I was busy. Busy? Busy. Ah, you haven't been busy for years. You have the softest job in this entire hospital. I'll have you know the other nurses refer to this assignment as the Chamber of Horrors. Well, that's only because you're here, Parker. Oh. Now, listen carefully, please. Here, take this check down to the bank and get it cashed. Dr. Gillespie, this is for $1,645. Do what I say. When you cash the check, take the money to a man named Bernard Schumann at Standard Products Company. You know where it is. Get out of here. Go on. Oh, Get. <laughs> well, playing a long shot again, aren't we? Well, Jimmy, our job is to cure this Finley boy. Permanently, if possible. And sometimes a cure calls for extreme measures. Somehow, from what people like his wife and his boss say about him, I don't feel that Joe Finley is such a long shot. He certainly has his troubles. What about his wife, Doctor? Are there any ideas? Just one. We should bring her to the hospital right away. She needs confident and sustained medical treatment. That is exactly my thought, Jimmy. That is exactly my thought. And this time, Blair General can stand the bill for 
Service rendered. Right. Now I'll send an ambulance out for her right away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, how do you like this room, Mrs. Finley? Think you can be happy here for a while? Oh, Dr. Kildare, it's just wonderful. Go ahead. It's so white and clean. Why, I feel better already. Are you sure this is what Joe wanted? What was his idea that we bring you here? But the money. Now, don't you worry about that. Oh, he works so hard and he spends all of our money on me. It isn't fair. I don't know why he doesn't hate me. Well, now it isn't your fault you became ill. Oh, but I shouldn't be such a burden to Joe. That's all I've been lately, burden. You know, I want to tell you something. You and Joe have the most wonderful thing in the world. A deep love for each other. And if things like this were going to make any difference between you, it would have happened a long time ago. Now, what you both have to do is try and get well as fast as you can. I want to. I've always wanted well, to. You just keep saying that, and you'll see. In a few weeks, you can take up right where you left off. Is Joe very far from here now? Just down the hallway. Oh, can I see him? Oh, please, can I see him just for a minute? Dr. Gillespie's in talking with him now, but when he's finished, I'll have you wheel down the hall to visit. But just for a few minutes. Dr. Kildare, I always thought there was nobody in the world like Joe. But I know now there are two others. You and Dr. Gillespie. How do you feel, Joe? Kind of worn out. Well, what you need is a good long rest. I can't rest, Doc. I got to get up and get out of here. How long will it take? Well, without any complications, I think we could have you on your feet in about ten days. I can't stay here that long. Oh, now, ten days doesn't seem to me like an abnormally big piece out of a lifetime, Joe. I have to get out of here in a couple of days. I need money. I got responsibilities. Joe... Your body will only stand so much worry and so much work and so many problems. Do you have any idea why you're here? It's my luck. <laughs> it always runs out on me. If it isn't one thing, it's another. Uh, it wasn't just bad luck. An ulcer is a boring process against the stomach lining. It's like having a drill pressed against your skin. Every time you worry, it's like giving the drill another twist. Pretty soon it gets right through. It leaves a hole that has to be repaired. And that's what's happened to you. What am I supposed to do? Just forget everything? Every day I lie here, I don't make money, and I need money bad. I know, I know. Just how bad? If you're worrying about that money at Standard Products, don't give it another thought. What? It's all taken care of, replaced. How, how did you find out? Who told you? Your foreman, Mr. Schumann. But who put it back? Did he? I did. I'll make it up to you, Doc, if I work overtime every day for the rest of my life, so help me. No, 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 no. Don't make another problem out of this, Joe. We'll figure out some way for you to pay this loan when you're feeling better. Doc, I, I guess it's up to me to tell you what I did with that money. I already know. You paid for medical treatment for your wife. How did you ever go to Dr. Klaus Blackthorne? Our landlady told us about him. Blackthorne was a big doctor at the State University. We were lucky to have him in our neighborhood. Mm. He said it would take a while, but that he'd cure Lorraine faster and cheaper than anyone could. Joe, there are no shortcuts in medicine. How much did Blackthorne charge you for shots that he was giving your wife? Ten bucks. Yeah. Three a week. Almost as much as I made. That's why I had a... I see. Well, here's Kildare. Hello, Joe. I have someone I'd like you to meet. Lorraine. Oh, Joe. Oh, Joe, honey. Oh, honey. (laughs) 
Let's see. 231, 233, 235. Ah, here it is. Look at the hallway. Well, it hasn't been swept in a year. There isn't any name on it, but this should be the door. Hey, there's a card in the corner. Mm -hmm. Dr. Klaus Blackthorne. Specializing in all diseases and non-surgical ailments. Yeah. Let's see this doctor, Jimmy. Well, nobody in the waiting room. Waiting room. <laughs> Looks more like a flop house. Hello? Hello? Anyone here? Excuse me, gentlemen. I was um, I was busy in my laboratory. Doing what? Oh, uh, some private experiments. Too complicated to explain. <clears throat> now then, uh, what uh, what can I do for I'm you? I'm Doctor Kildare, and this is Doctor Gillespie from Blair General. Oh yes, yes, I see. Well, I I'm quite busy now. Some other time, perhaps. Uh... Sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Doctor Blackthorne, uh, do you have a license to practice medicine? Of course, of course. Now what I've, do you want? I've checked on you through every available source. You have no license to practice medicine. You're not a doctor, and you've never been one. But you're, you're mistaken. Look there, my diploma on the wall. I'm a, I'm a graduate of the State University. I see the diploma, and it's as phony as you are. You never were in or near the State University. I spoke with their registrar an hour ago. Well, I don't see why I should be subjected Shut to... Shut up, you charlatan. Did you ever treat a patient named Lorraine Finley? Uh, Finley? Finley? No, no, I never heard of her. She said you did treat her, and we prefer to believe her. That girl has a malignant and serious case of anemia. She could have died under your care. Well, I did her no harm, just, uh, just health shots. Health shots? But you should see how unhealthy this girl is now. Well, she's so weak she can't even walk. Well, I must have made the wrong diagnosis. Yeah. Um, now, listen, gentlemen. Blackthorn, uh... you've been doing the most dangerous and despicable thing a human being can do. You've been posing behind the name of doctor and giving treatment to people who trusted you. It'll take months to undo the harm you've spread in this neighborhood. Well, uh, uh, gen gentlemen, let, let us have a little uh, business conference. Uh... Ah, don't you dare mention bribery to us. Why, by the great horn spoon, I should beat you into insensibility. Now, no, no, please. The penalty for posing and practicing as a doctor in this state is ten years. Dr. Gillespie and I are going to testify against you, and I hope you get every year of it. I only wish it were a hundred years. Now, uh, we're only wasting time with this parasite, Jimmy. Let's call the police. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. And you take one step out of that chair, and I'll break it over your head. Look, I, I'll give you money. I, I made a mistake. Gentlemen, I'll, I'll do anything. Hello, operator. Give me the police department. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Parker, grab one of these packages quick before I drop oh. them. Oh. Oh. Ah. oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Gillespie. I couldn't get to you in time. Oh, it's not your fault, I suppose. Give me a hand, we'll pick them up. Well. Thing. Well, in that package is a dismantled, genuine glass trout rod. And in that one are six mystery novels. And in this green one is a heavy-duty hammock, complete with canopy. What in the world? Have you ever heard of taking a vacation? Frankly, no. Well, I'm sorry I brought it up. What did I hear about a vacation? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Uh, come in here. I want to show you something. <laughs> Just a minute, Dr. G. I have something I want to show you. 
Have you seen today's paper? No. Why? Well, what's in it? This. Let me see it. Huh? Oh. Today in municipal court, this one? Mm-hmm. Klaus Blackthorne, who posed for more than two years as a registered physician, was sentenced to ten years in the state prison at... <laughs> well, Jimmy, I can't say I'm sorry. I hope this will be a warning to other men not to tamper with the medical profession. Here, here. And did you know that Mrs. Joe Finley is being discharged today? Yeah, sure, Jimmy. I, I saw her early this morning. She's quite a gal. She's going to join Joe up in Connecticut. <laughs> he wrote her a letter last week and said by the end of the year he expects to be a partner in the store he's working in. He probably will be, too, Jimmy. He, he's got a lot of ambition. Now, if you will pardon me, uh, I'll have to go on my vacation. Parker, give me a hand. Dr. Gillespie, you didn't tell anybody about your vacation. Where are you going? Where I always go on my vacation. Huh? Right here in the office. Now, oh, come on, set me up this hammock. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by E. Jack Newman and John Michael Hayes and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Paul Dubov, Isabel Jewell, Paul Fries, Anne Diamond, and Jay Novello. Dick Joy speaking.